Things are hotting up under Iceland, and we are probably on the verge of a huge volcanic eruption. In this video, we take a look at the spectacular original footage and find out just how dangerous this eruption could be. I'm galactically happy about a thumbs up and a comment, because that's how we get the algorithm to show this exciting topic to even more people. Thanks guys and welcome. Does anyone else remember the unpronounceable volcano, the Eyjafjalla Fjuk, the Eyjafjalla Jack? Age of Geological? Something like that. This volcano in the very south of Iceland decided to cause a bit of chaos in Europe in 2010. Several eruptions produced a massive ash cloud, which you can see here. Due to the ash entering the atmosphere, thousands of flights were cancelled, causing major disruption to air travel and making travel across large parts of Europe impossible. An impressive example of how our modern civilization is still vulnerable to the brutal forces of nature. A volcanic eruption here, a solar storm there and there goes our modern conveniences. And now that could be about to happen again, as another volcano under Iceland is preparing to erupt very soon. Before we take a closer look, let's first find out how volcanism there comes about and why Iceland is the land of ice and fire. Iceland lies on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, one of the most famous geological boundaries in the world. This vast undersea mountain range stretches across the Atlantic Ocean and marks the boundary between the North American and Eurasian tectonic plates. It is precisely here, at this interface of two large tectonic plates, that Iceland was formed and where it regularly feels the unbridled force of the Earth's crust. This is because the movement of the tectonic plates creates space for magma from the Earth's mantle to rise to the surface. This rising magma then forms the basis for the formation of volcanoes. But the more observant among you will now ask. But why just where Iceland is, and not over the entire Mid-Atlantic Ridge? Good question. In addition to the plate boundary, there is another decisive factor under Iceland. A so-called mantle plume. A mantle plume is a rising flow of hot rock from the Earth's interior that rises beneath the Earth's crust and leads to increased volcanic activity. This hot spot under Iceland amplifies the already existing geological activity and leads to an increased number of volcanoes. It is aptly named the Iceland Plume. Without this Icelandic plume and the constant supply of molten material from the Earth's interior, Iceland would probably have already broken apart in the past and would consist of several fragmented islands today. All in all, we really do have perfect conditions for volcanism in Iceland, and this is also reflected in the large number of volcano types. We find stratovolcanoes, shield volcanoes, and central volcanoes. Layered volcanoes are classic cone-shaped volcanoes with a central opening from which lava can escape. Shield volcanoes are flatter and wider and tend to have a less explosive eruptive style, and central volcanoes are smaller volcanoes that are often associated with glaciers. And it is this association with glaciers that has earned them the nickname Land of Fire and Ice. You can imagine it like when Coke meets Mentos. These glacier volcanoes are particularly dangerous because the contact between lava and ice can lead to explosive eruptions that really put the Colomento's explosion in the shade. Incidentally, this was also the case with Age of Geological in 2010 and may soon be the case again. The signs of a possible new volcanic eruption began at the end of October this year with increased earthquake activity in the region around Grindavik, not far from the capital Reykjavik, located in the southeast of the island. How worried are the authorities? Very. If we take a look at this quote from the Icelandic Civil Protection Service, Iceland is facing events that we have never experienced before, at least not since the eruption of Vestmanajar. This refers to an eruption in 1973 that started without warning and destroyed 400 houses, so we can see that the situation is absolutely serious. Hundreds of earthquakes at a depth of 3 to 5 kilometers have been measured in Grindavik since the weekend and a huge amount of magma is responsible for this, which wants to come out. But not in a classic volcanic way from around crater, but from a 10 to 15 kilometers long fissure. It is currently forming and filling up with more and more magma. The first effects can already be observed on the surface, which collapsed in several places last week, forming elongated trenches. Icelandic volcanologist Thorvald Thoratsen says, This indicates that the eruption will happen soon and that, unfortunately, it will happen inside the city. Consequently, the entire city was evacuated last weekend. 3,800 people had to leave their homes for the time being. What happens next will be exciting, because the severity of the eruption depends on exactly where it happens. 
An eruption directly under the town away from the coast would be devastating for Grindavik, but overall it would be the lesser option. It would be much more violent if the magma trench decided to erupt under the ocean. Then we would have a Kola Mentos situation. Because the interaction between magma and seawater would then result in a much more massive eruption. Something like this has happened in Iceland several times in the past. In 1963, for example, there was an underwater eruption that lasted several years and created the island of Surtsey, which lies around 30 kilometers off the south coast. Even if it were the more violent eruption, this would definitely be the better option for the inhabitants of Grindavik. Besides, they might have a new island on their doorstep, which would also be something. But I can already hear some of you asking nervously. Is this going to throw the whole continent into chaos again? Most volcanologists believe that it won't be as violent this time, regardless of the type of eruption. Even for Reykjavik, which is only about 70 kilometers away, scientists see little to no danger. And it should not be forgotten that there is still the possibility that the magma will not come to the surface at all. British volcanologist Dave McGarvey says, eruptions only occur in one in three or four cases. In the best case scenario, it happens with the 15 kilometer trench that's just formed, and it just cools and solidifies and doesn't erupt. But dangers can arise even without an eruption. The earthquakes are already there and have caused damage to the local infrastructure. And experts fear that toxic volcanic vapors, especially sulfur dioxide, could be emitted. That's why the famous Blue Lagoon not far from Grindavik has already closed. So, if you had booked your well-deserved spa vacation there for the next few days, this could be tricky. Let me know in the comments if you've ever been to Iceland and if so, what you visited. Unfortunately, I haven't been there yet, but I would be very interested in your travel reports. If the situation changes or the volcano erupts, I will of course inform you immediately. But to make sure you don't miss it, you should subscribe to my channel now. More than half of the viewers haven't subscribed, but it's absolutely free. It helps me and you won't miss any more galactic videos. I am very close to the 15,000 subscriptions and would be very happy if you help me to crack this goal. Magma is not only bubbling under Iceland, but also in southern Italy under Naples and the Phlegrean fields. If this super volcano erupts, it will affect the entire continent and experts are extremely worried as the signs of an eruption are increasing. You can find out how high the danger is and original footage of the sulfur fields in the video shown. Be sure to watch it, it's very exciting. And if you would like to support my work, why not treat yourself to real meteorites or fluffy plush black holes in my Astro store. They all make fantastic Christmas presents and everyone who buys them helps me a lot. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care guys.